a couple of years ago, there was a New York uh, mafia guy. Sometimes they call them mobsters. Uh, and this guy was named John Gotti. And, uh, and his nickname was the Teflon Don. The reason they call... <laughs> The reason they called him the Teflon Don, many of you, most of you are probably familiar with Teflon. Teflon's this coating they use on cook pan, uh, cookware, like pots and pans. It prevents the food from sticking to the pan. In the case of John Gotti, they called him the Teflon Don, Don referring to the leader of a mafia group, because every time the government or the cops tried to throw charges on, uh, at him, he wound up beating it, so they said that nothing could stick to him. He was the Teflon Don. Eventually, they caught up with him. I'm not talking about John Gotti here. Today, I want to talk about Teflon. As I said, people around the world they use these non-stick pots and pans, uh, and it's uh, Teflon's great because you could cook pancakes on it, uh, sausages, fry eggs. <clears throat> you know, it it, um, it prevents the food from sticking to the pan, which uh, which could be a pain in the neck to put it bluntly uh, but the problem with Teflon is that Teflon is a chemical I, I believe I'm not sure exactly I think it might have been developed by the DuPont Corporation years ago and and a couple of years uh, for a couple of years they've said that Teflon could present serious health problems uh, especially when it starts to break down now what is Teflon Teflon is a commercial name for a material called polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE, that's Teflon. And I'm not going to be using that long name in this video. I'm just going to call it Teflon. Now, what it is, it's a, it's a synthetic chemical and it's composed of carbon and fluorine atoms. It was, it, it was first created way back in the 1930s. And again, it provides a, a non stick, almost frictionless surface. I believe it's even used on, on the parts of, of uh, rockets and all that kind of stuff. It has other applications. It can be used to make wire and cable coatings, fabric and carpet protectors, and waterproof fabrics for uh, clo outdoor clothing, such as raincoats. But uh, again, uh, in the last couple of years, it's been under investigation uh, because of the uh, uh, because of this uh, chemical called perfluoctaconic acid, which was uh, w that was previous used to, previously used to produce non-stick cookware, uh, often with Teflon, but it's not used today. It was previously used. Uh, we're going to call this stuff PFOA. All Teflon products today are PFOA free. So the effects of PFOA are no longer tenable. In other words, you don't have to worry about it anymore. But, you but if you have older pots and pans that are Teflon co uh, coated, uh, you have to be careful because they were used uh, uh, in the production of uh, PFO was used in the production of Teflon all the way until 2013. That's when it was discontinued. Most of the PFOA was burnt off when you cooked at high temperatures, but a small amount remained in the final product. In other words, it got it into your food. Uh, but the research found, despite that, the research found that Teflon cookware wasn't a significant source of PFOA exposure. Now, PFOA itself, why would be, you be concerned about that? It's been linked to a number of health conditions, including thyroid disorders, chronic kidney disease, liver disease, and testicular cancer. It's, all been it's also been linked to infertility and low birth weight. In fact, it showed up, uh, according to the U.S. Uh, 1999 to 2000 National Health and, and Nutrition Examination Survey, survey also called NAHANS, uh, it, it was found in the blood of more than 98% of the people that uh, that was surveyed during those years. <coughs> um, based on that, they started a program in 2006 to try and eliminate PFOA from Teflon products. Uh, so the companies ev eventually met the goal and the, the PFO, uh, PFOA was removed from Teflon products uh, in 2013. Uh, there, there's still other components that are in the Teflon that are still not completely understood. One of them uh, is called PFAS. That stands for per and polyfluoroactyl substances. Uh, they could pose a health risk. Nobody's really sure. Uh, right now, they're just researching it to find out. Uh, they, uh, the U.S. 
Consumer Product Safety Commission just put out a statement on the potential risk of PFAS in products, and the, and the Environmental Protection Agency just warned about the presence of, of them in drinking water. So uh, again, it's not fully understood, uh, but generally speaking, Teflon is a safe and stable compound. But when cooking at high temperatures above 500 degrees Fahrenheit, the Teflon coatings on non-stick cookware start to break down, and that releases toxic chemicals in the air. Inhaling these fumes may lead to what they call polymer fume fever, also known as the Teflon flu. Polymer fume fever consists of a temporary flu-like symptoms, such as chills, fever, headache, and body aches. The onset occurs 4 to 10 hours after exposure, and it usually disappears within 12 to 48 hours. A number of other case studies have reported more serious side effects uh, after exposure to overheated Teflon, including possible lung damage. Uh, But in all those reported cases, the people were exposed to fumes from overcooked Teflon cookware at extreme temperatures of at least 730 degrees Fahrenheit for extended periods of at least four hours. So if you, you know, if you don't cook in that extreme manner, it's not a problem. Uh, you know, what can you do to, uh, what can you do to, to minimize any possible health effects associated with cooking with Teflon cookware? First, don't preheat an empty pan. Empty pans can reach high temperatures within minutes, and that can cause the release of polymer fumes. Make sure you have some food or liquid in the pots and pans before you preheat. Avoid cooking at high heat, as I mentioned. Most of the problems, the health problems that occur with these substances that are released usually occur under high heat cooking. So you want to cook at medium or low heat and avoid broiling since that cooking technique requires temperatures above those recommended for non-stick cookware. Make sure your kitchen is ventilated. Turn up your exhaust fan or open the windows to clear out any fumes that might develop. Use wooden, silicone, or plastic utensils. Medi- uh, the metal, metal utensils can lead to scuffs and scratches on, on the nonstick su- uh, surface, which damages the Teflon cookware and also could cause the release of some of these chemicals. Uh, when you want to wa- wash the pots and pans, it's uh, sponge, so- soapy warm water. Don't use steel wheel or scouring pads, obviously, since they could scratch the surface. And when, they, when the Teflon co- coatings start to deteriorate, uh, it's best to just get rid of them. Now, there's alternatives. In case you are, are concerned about these substances related to Teflon cookware, you have a couple of alternatives. You could cook with stainless steel cookware. It's very good for sautéing and browning food. It's durable and sca- scratch resistant. St- it's dishware safe. Cast iron cookware goes way back. Uh, ca- cast iron is naturally non-stick. It lasts a long time. It can withstand temperatures well above those considered for non-stick pots and pans. Stoneware has been used for thousands of years to heat evenly. It's non-stick when seasoned. Also, it's scratch resistant. can be heated to very high temperatures. Ceramic cookware. Ceramic cookware is a, is a new product. It has excellent non-stick properties. But the coating, just like Teflon, can be easily scratched. You could try silicone cookware. It's a synthetic rubber, mainly used in, in baking, uh, baking stuff and with, ki- and with kitchen utensils. It doesn't stand up well to direct heat. Best used for baking. Uh, so um, that's about it, really. I uh, just wanted to do this uh, little short video on, uh, on the effects of Teflon because some people are a little concerned about it. But uh, to sum it all up, it's very simple. Uh, the main chemical that was released uh, that caused, thought to cause health problems related to Teflon uh, was so w- w- the companies that produced Teflon stopped uh, making the Teflon with this chemical Ba- in 2013, so if you buy new Teflon cookware, you don't have to worry about it, but you still don't want to overheat food or preheat it uh, without any food when you're using Teflon. Otherwise, it's safe. Uh, I use Teflon all the time. Uh, I don't overheat. I just use it to cook eggs. Uh, I have a little uh, cooking uh, thing that somebody sent me years ago, and uh, you know, frankly, I'm able to make uh, a cheese omelet, which I have about once or twice a week. I'll have a cheese omelet, and using the Teflon pan with this cooking thing, I could actually make it in under 60 seconds, <laughs> believe it or not. That's how, and I'm not a cook, so I don't like to spend a long time standing in front of a stove. So that's about it for Teflon. 
Uh, if you uh, want more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, effective fat loss techniques, uh, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't. Women's health and fitness, all of this is covered in my Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 30 to 50 pages every month, no ads, just pure evidence-based information that includes my 60 years of experience in nutrition and exercise sciences. Uh, when you subscribe to Applied Metabolics, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and general health and medicine. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything that comes to mind and I'll be happy to answer them as a service and an appreciation of their subscription to Applied Metabolics. Of course that means that I won't answer unsolicited questions uh, so you know you have to be a subscriber. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments under my videos for possible uh, future video topics. Uh, it, uh, I come out with these videos once a week usually on Tuesdays so if you want to keep up with it you just you know you could subscribe hit the subscribe button whatever it is and please tell others about this uh, about this channel my channel it's listed as the Jerry Brainup channel uh, it's one of the few YouTube videos that you'll find where there's no access to grind there's no I'm not trying to sell you anything no equipment I'm not trying to sell you any supplements all I do I do mention my newsletter or my applied metabolics because I consider it of great value to anybody who anyone who's interested in the topics I cover in my videos would be extremely interested in subscribing that's why I mention it so I'll leave it at that uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have go to your local shelter and adopt a dog take care